salute to hoops guys welcome back to the channel this is video number three of 2021 hope everyone's new year is off to a good start uh looks like we kind of stumbled out of the starting blocks for 2021 but hopefully the events that occurred the other day are not a depiction of what the future holds for us this year especially in the card market so before we get into today's video, guys, uh, if you want to go ahead and subscribe, that would be sweet. I would really appreciate that. Uh, we are up to 138 followers, excuse me, subscribers, uh, which is plus three for this year already. So that's sweet. We're on the right path, guys. Um, hopefully we can grow the channel into something great this year. Uh, haven't been around for quite one year yet. I believe I started this channel back in April. So uh, 138 subs in eight months or so is not bad, at least in my opinion. So hopefully we can get growing even more. Uh, so I really appreciate the follow and uh, the likes. So uh, thank you very much to those that have been around and been supporting me. I really appreciate it and hope I can continue to make these pretty cool videos for you guys. So we're going to get into today's video uh, a little... Uh, little uh, bit of a, like an investment type video uh, really can't find any hobby, any product excuse me in the wild unfortunately as far as NBA hoops hopefully that'll change uh, when the new batch of hoops comes out next month uh, I do have this I've been waiting waiting around on this for quite a while now so if, it's just a uh, it's got some weight to it actually to it impact basketball 1999-2000. Uh, uh, I've been sitting on this for some months now, so been thinking about opening that. Uh, if you want me to, let me know in the next video or in the, uh, in the comments below. Uh, it could be a fun little rip. Um, but uh, for today's video, we're going to go over some rookies, some current rookies uh, in this year's draft class that have been kind of intriguing me and um, some guys that I'm probably going to be looking into uh, investing in for the next batch of cards that comes out. So these are in no particular order. Uh, James Wiseman and LaMelo Ball are not going to be mentioned here because uh, I believe those are kind of givens at this point. Uh, but we're going to be going over some other guys. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the first guy we're going to be talking about today, guys, is one uh, that's been pretty much killing it uh, since day one. And that's going to be uh, Tyrese Halliburton from Iowa State. Uh, now he does play on the... Uh, Sacramento Kings the Kings are pretty horrible as we all know uh, but this guy has definitely been doing his thing uh, as far as uh, the minutes he's been given uh, I think he's averaging around like 28 minutes per game down in uh, Sacramento and he's getting the chance to play and he's kind of proven himself to be a, uh, a factor and showing that he belongs in the league so uh, I've gotten a chance to see him play a couple times uh on TV and definitely has some good decision-making skills. He plays point guard, uh, which kind of puts them in an awkward position because they have De'Aaron Fox, which is obviously a player for the future for them as well. Uh, but they might be able to run him at like shooting guard or something. Uh, we'll see. He's 6'5", so that's not too bad for too bad of a height for being a shooting guard, especially in today's league. So uh, although they do have Buddy Heald, but... Uh, they've had some differences uh, publicly as well, uh, Buddy Heald in the franchise. So I guess we'll see as far as that goes. But Tyrese Halliburton definitely looks like a player that belongs in the NBA. Looks like a draft steal for the Sacramento Kings. Currently averaging 11 points per game and around uh, five assists per game for them. Can shoot the ball pretty well uh, from the three. Uh, looks like he has some good field, uh, field goal percentages as well. I believe his three-point percentage is like 48%. Uh, it's a pretty small uh, sample size at this point. However, uh, he looks like uh, like a pretty good steal for them as, as well. So uh, De'Aaron Fox did just get injured too. He's going to be out with a hamstring injury. So that puts kind of the spotlight on Tyrese Halliburton. So I'm going to be looking to see uh, what he does in those uh, larger minutes that he's going to be uh, getting uh, while... De'Aaron Fox is out so definitely a guy that caught my eye for sure and 
Yeah, I think that he's going to be a, a definitely a solid player in the NBA. No doubt about it. Uh, the next person we're going to be talking about here is this guy, Precious Ochua for the Miami Heat. Uh, gotten a chance to see him play a couple times as well. Obviously, you can't watch everyone play. So, um, But this guy can definitely play for sure. Uh, one of the... I think he's like the only player on this uh, this list that's not on a a bad team, uh, but he's doing his thing for sure in Miami, averaging about 15 minutes per game, uh, doing well as far as his uh, efficiency goes, averaging around uh, seven points per game and almost five rebounds per game, uh, which is not too bad at all. Can run the court, can shoot the three. Uh, six foot eight big man. I believe they list him at power forward. So uh, he's like a, he's one of those new age guys for sure uh, that we're starting to see in the NBA. Uh, big men that can that are versatile and can kind of shoot the ball uh, from the not only the fifteen uh, foot range but also like the the three point line because he can definitely shoot from the three. Uh, would definitely love to see him develop more uh, and get see, get some more minutes down there in, in Miami. Uh, and so we can really see what he can do. But in the time that he is get, getting it allocated to him, definitely showing that he's another steal uh, in the NBA draft this year. So um, his style of play kind of reminds me of like a, a Kenneth Fareed, um, Montrezl Harrell type of guy. Uh, just brings some energy to the court and does a little bit of everything as far as shooting, rebounding, and playing defense. So definitely a fan of Precious Ochua for sure. Uh, the next person on our list is going to be uh, a guy that I wanted the Bulls to draft this year, but I'm also happy with Patrick Williams, but it's going to be this guy right here. Uh, that's Denny Avdia, uh, who currently plays for the Wizards. Now, the Wizards are not a good team, even though they did trade for uh, Russell Westbrook this year. Uh, just seems like Russell Westbrook, just he, he does his own thing, really, so... Uh, we all know the type of player Russell Westbrook is at this point in his career. So, uh, But Denny Abia is getting some good playing time for sure. Almost 24 minutes per game down there in Washington, averaging 6.5 points per game and four rebounds. Uh, he's definitely showing that he's also comfortable in the NBA. I think a lot of people were uh, kind of scared uh, for that kind of prototypical uh, Euro player Uh that you know does not transition well to the NBA, but uh, in the time that I've seen him play on the court, uh, it looks like Denny Avdia is pretty comfortable. He needs to gain some weight still uh, and get acclimated to the the pace of the game. Uh, but uh, from what I've seen, he's definitely going to be a guy that probably sticks around in the league for sure. Whether it's going to be with the, the Washington Wizards his entire career, I'm not too sure. They seem to be kind of in a mess right now. Uh, they'll have to figure out what they're going to do with both him and Rui Hashimura since they both pretty much essentially play the exact same position. Uh, but I do like what he brings to the to the game. Another one of those guys that's, you know, the new age uh, big man as far as being able to run the court and shoot the ball from the three and kind of spread the court a little bit. So definitely not going to give you like a ton of rebounds or anything like that. Uh, and his defense, like I said, needs some work. Uh, but... Definitely a player that I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more of and kind of investing in, hopefully, um, in the near future. And hopefully his game kind of matures a little bit more because I really like the guy. And like I said, I wanted the Bulls uh, to draft him, but we did get uh, Patrick Williams, which brings me into our next player. Uh, huge fan of Patrick Williams. I know that there was a lot of we'll say controversy surrounding him with the Bulls pick, uh, drafting him as high as they did. Uh, and I'll admit as well, I had no idea who Patrick Williams was, but uh, he's proven that he's actually pretty solid in the NBA so far. Uh, in the games that I've seen, I've watched a lot of Bulls games since they are my team. He's shown uh, definitely uh, some maturity uh, for his age. The kid's only 19 years old, um, and he's being kind of thrust into this position of really a starting position for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, they're kind of also in a mess right now. Uh, the Bulls aren't a very good team, which I knew they weren't going to be this year. Uh, but he's showing that he's got some good decision-making skills, 
definitely needs to obviously uh, mature. I mean, he, he, he is only 19 years old, but uh, for what it is, he's, in my opinion, doing pretty well. Can run the court. Uh, defense is huge for this guy. Plays both ends of the court. Can shoot the ball. Averaging 10 points per game right now uh, with almost four rebounds, I believe. And just super exciting to see uh, this kid um, on the Chicago Bulls. And I've seen the uh, quote-unquote Kawhi Leonard uh, comparisons. I'm not going to go that far yet. I'm not going to get my hopes up, especially as a Bulls fan. Uh, but Patrick Williams is definitely... Uh, proving to a lot of people that he belongs in the NBA and uh, arguably belonged at that number uh, four pick for the Chicago Bulls. So super exciting. Love the guy. I might be a little biased in this, but I really think that he's going to do well in the NBA. So moving on to our next guy uh, and this, and he's going to have a chance to show us really what he can do. And that's Cole Anthony. Uh, Markel Fultz unfortunately went down with that ACL injury. Uh, they don't have Jonathan Isaac, who got injured last year. So uh, prior to the Markel Fultz injury, uh, Cole Anthony was averaging almost nine points per game. The kid can also rebound too, averaging five rebounds a game and then almost four assists. Uh, at 6'3", he's a decent-sized point guard for the league. And like I said, he's we're going to see his uptick in time go go kind of almost through the roof because I mean they are the magic are down players uh they need a point guard and sorry for the break guys uh I was getting a phone call um like I was saying the magic are not a good basketball team by any means and in my opinion if you're not a good team you guys have no shot at the playoffs whatsoever you might as well let your rookies play and I think Cole Anthony has the opportunity to show exactly what he can bring to the table um, with this Orlando Magic team. Currently averaging 21 minutes per game. That's going to definitely go up with that injury to Markel Fultz um, for sure. Doesn't really shoot the three ball very well, at least not from what we've seen. Uh, but uh, he's he's only like 20 years old, I believe, something like that, maybe even 19. Uh, so there's plenty of room for Cole Anthony to grow for sure and like I said he's going to be getting a lot of a lot of playing time a lot of experience down there in Orlando so uh, I'm hoping that uh, whatever he shows us uh, is 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 good as far as his skills go and he's going to need to to mature very quickly he's kind of in the same position as like Patrick Williams and and uh, Denny Avia where he is not on a good team and he's going to be getting that experience so Hopefully Cole Anthony can prove to us exactly what he can do this year. Super exciting player at North Carolina. And definitely, definitely want to see what that guy can do. Moving on, another guy that's on a horrible, horrible team. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Detroit Pistons cannot get it right, at least not yet anyway. They're kind of stuck in a horrible salary cap situation. But that's Sadiq Bey, small forward for the Pistons. Definitely a versatile player, plays both ends of the court. Getting some solid uh, playing time as well down there in in Detroit. I mean, averaging a little under 23 minutes per game. Uh, 10 points per game, 5 rebounds per game. He's a big body. And uh, once again, one of those quote-unquote new age uh, big men. I mean, he's 6'8", uh, which isn't you know too big of a guy. Uh, but he's showing that he can do a lot more than just kind of set, you know, set and shoot or or, or anything like that. Uh, definitely a versatile player and a player that is kind of what the NBA is looking like it's going to be as far as this the next batch of of young guys goes. And the thing that I noticed about this rookie class, and that's in, even including Lamelo and James Wiseman, is that they're all averaging around the same amount of points per game. I think as of right now, LaMelo is averaging like 12 points per game. Same thing with Wiseman. So uh, they all seem to be kind of in that same range right now as far as uh, points uh, po points per game go, uh, which is exciting. I think that uh, there's definitely uh, some players in this draft class uh, that can make an impact in the NBA. 
Uh, there's obviously no Zion or Ja type players, but uh, these are the guys that kind of, you know, they go unnoticed. And then next thing you know, they have a breakout season. And I'm hoping that there's a few players, especially the ones that I'm talking to you guys about, uh, that, that fit that mold. It looks like there might be. But Sadiq Bey, like I said, versatile big man, 6'8", small forward, can play the power forward if he needs to, can shoot the ball. My question for Detroit would be what they're going to do with uh, Siku Dumboya uh, as both him and Sadiq Bey play the same position. The Pistons are a mess, though, but I'm looking to see uh, what they do like next in the next coming seasons when they get that cap space and whatnot. And this guy, the next guy is kind of an honorable man mention, uh, Peyton Pritchard. Seen him play a couple times, plays for the Boston Celtics right now. Uh, he's played a shooting guard and is getting some solid minutes too. I mean, the guy's, I think he's getting like 22 minutes per game, also averaging around 10 points per game. And who knows, maybe this guy will be like another Duncan Robinson type player uh, where he just kind of surprises everyone and comes out of nowhere. Uh, but the thing with uh, the Celtics is that they have like a plethora of guards on their team. Uh, Tremont Waters, Grant Williams, uh, I think Jalen Noel, or sorry, Jalen Brown plays uh, guard as well, or maybe he's a, a small forward or something like that. Uh, Grant Williams, I think I just mentioned him. And then they also have Kemba. So uh, the Boston Celtics are super guard heavy, uh, but it's looking like Peyton Pritchard is also another steal uh, in this draft. Uh, like I said, this is just a small sample size, but I like what I'm seeing from this kid, and I'm hoping that he kind of flies under the radar. And he's definitely a guy that I'll be looking to uh, kind of hoard maybe uh, once the real uh, Ricky cards come out. So I just want to give him kind of a shout out uh, because he is doing his thing over there in Boston. So boom, that completes it, guys. Hope the video wasn't too long. Uh, I know that a lot of people like these kind of investment type videos. So I just want to make one real quick. I haven't made one in a while, especially to include this new draft class that we have. It's super exciting. Um, I love it when uh, the talent just doesn't jump out at you like this last draft class did. So uh, I'm hoping that that has an impact on cards and the card market as far as being able to find them in stores because I can't find anything in the stores. And hopefully these guys are able to show themselves and prove that this draft class wasn't the bust or the mediocre draft class, uh, as was previously, previously stated, pretty much throughout the entire season coming up to the draft. Um, so that's it for me, guys. Like I said, hope you enjoyed the video. And let me know if you guys want to see this thing cracked on a next another video or so, because there could be something in here. Maybe a Kobe auto or something like that. That'd be pretty sweet, so... Follow me on Instagram, guys. I appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.